Kunafa is truly a Middle Eastern wonder. It is rightly called the queen of desserts because it got that perfect crunch on the exterior, the soft gooeyness of the cheesy filling and more importantly, it's got that luscious sugar syrup that engulfs the entire mix. While most often people feel kunafa is a little difficult to get right, here I have an easy recipe to create. It gets done in about 45 minutes flat, warm with subtle scents of turkey coming right through with it. Let's get to cooking it. To start off, we're just going to preheat our oven to 200 degrees Celsius for a good 10 minutes and in the meantime let's get to creating the perfect mix for the kunafa. Kunafa as a dessert is so simple it just has three very distinct layers. It has the vermicelli, it has the stuffing and it has the sugar syrup. Once you understand these three principles you can actually get innovative, get stylish and create quirky new age ideas within. I've got about 250 grams of this beautiful vermicelli. The finer the vermicelli, the more crispy the kunafa. So here is my fine vermicelli that I roasted, allowed it to cool and just broke it into medium-sized crunch pieces. So in that goes about 200 grams of melted butter. I've also tried making kunafa with softened butter, but what really happens is it doesn't really allow to get that perfect crunch. So melted butter is the trick here because it allows it to bake and give you that perfect crunch. With the butter in, we're just going to mix everything up. Gently mix it so that the butter has mixed very well and it's ready to be set aside. And now it's time to create the most beautiful stuffing that goes sandwiched in between. Creating this gorgeous stuffing is really simple. You take about two tablespoons of sugar into a bowl. To forget my crudeness because I'm just so excited in creating this. In that goes 250 ml of milk. 250 ml of cream. So I've actually simplified the recipe and this is a hot favorite in our family. So it really works out here and two tablespoons of corn flour to thicken the entire mix. Just mix it gently so that the corn flour creates the perfect mix and slurry. You can whisk it or just go right ahead and mix it with the spatula and just break all the additional lumps that the corn flour has formed. While I am a great fan of lazy cooking, this is my version of it. You can actually take a whisk and smoothen the entire emulsion. As you mix this for about a minute to a minute and a half, ensuring all the lumps have actually emulsified with the cream and milk mixture, it's time now to put it straight into a heavy bottom pan to allow it to thicken. Allow this beautiful mix of milk, cream, sugar and corn flour to come to a rapid boil whisking it continuously so that it gets that perfect smoothest of emulsions this takes about four to five minutes you do not need to stress too much on it and once it's done you just switch off the flame and add the ricotta and the mozzarella within with this boiling all we are going to do now is switch off the flame and in goes about 250 grams of ricotta cheese just mix it and 250 grams of mozzarella so the trick to use ricotta or any soft cheese you can also use a cream cheese variant here is to balance out the chewy rubbery texture of mozzarella so you have to ensure that the mozzarella and any soft cheese variant that you're using is the same quantity and this forms my perfect, perfect gooey texture that forms the center of the beautiful kunafa. You can also add in a rose essence or a rose syrup into this mix just to scent and enhance the entire flavor. However, I'm creating the perfect Turkish sugar syrup that has orange blossom and rose petals. So no rose essence going into this now. To divide now the vermicelli on a bake pan into two equal halves so while I have 
one half into this the other half forms the top layer so just put it all in the center and now it's best advisable to go right in with your hands to smoothen it out and form the thinnest possible layer. This is a cross between a sandwich and a pizza actually because it's got the crunch but at the same time it's engulfed beautifully between. Just form the perfect thinnest of layer at the bottom and let it rise up to the side so that you have that perfect covered tart. I call this actually a covered tart because it's covered from all sides and it's got the luscious gooeyness within. Now with the beautiful vermicelli encased in my baked pan, which looks more like actually the bottom layer of a perfect quiche or a tart, I'm just going to now pour the stuffing right on top. Just allow the stuffing to go right across. This is more magical in making than actually eating it because it looks so beautiful and so divine. Let's not waste any of this stuffing. So put all that into this sheer, sheer, beautiful vermicelli pan. Play with your whisk, allow it to go right into all the corners and crevices just so that it fills in beautifully and forms the perfect cheesy interior. This is actually sheer heaven for me and I enjoy this dessert all through my time. I've actually eaten some great kunafas in Dubai and I think they make it really well. So this is my version of a Middle Eastern classic. Now, most often they never ever sprinkle pistachios on it, but I have to always add my twist to it. So in goes about 30 to 40 grams of beautiful roasted pistachio slivers. They just add to that overall nutty texture that's so required in this gooey interior. Now comes the most difficult part in this kunafa and that's sprinkling the thinnest of crust on the top. So you loosen out the vermicelli that is has all the melted butter in it and you gently start sprinkling so that it covers everything but doesn't form too thick of a crust. I'm sure this dessert would actually work very well with kids because it requires the finer finer hands to actually create the most thinnest of tops on this. So with this coming on top beautifully, we're just going to ensure that it's an even layer and not too thick or too fat. At times, I've also tasted kunafas which have the thickest of vermicelli crust. Not really my cup of tea or my style of eating it. There we have it. It's done and you exactly finish up your entire mix. All this needs is to allow a good tap so that it comes together and forms that perfect thing. So I call this tap actually a way of checking and ensuring that everything is in perfect harmony out here. This gorgeous kunafa to bake in a preheated oven at 200 degrees Celsius for a good half an hour. While I'm doing it shortcut in the oven, you can also create the kunafa right in a non-stick pan or a cast iron pan. Halfway through the cooking time, 15 minutes, you're supposed to flip it over on a lid and slide it back in and allow the other side to cook. With this now in the oven, it's time to create the most beautiful sugar syrup that's going to scent and accentuate this great kunafa. This luscious sugar syrup is so easy to create. It's got one cup of sugar. To that, I'm just going to add one cup of water. The juice of one lemon. That gives it that extra zing that's so required. And this is a beautiful infused tea, very Turkish in nature. It's got 
rose petals, it's got orange blossoms, it's got baklava seeds, it's got some saffron and this was actually a gift from a friend. Most of my friends who travel internationally, the one thing that they have to get back for me is some great experience or great ingredient that the country that they've been in is known for. While you're supposed to strain this liquid before you actually put it on top of the kunafa, I'm going to let the rose petals and the orange blossom just accentuate it. I'm just going to bring this to a boil and allow it to steep to get to its real goodness. Now, while I've used all these beautiful infusions from Turkey, you can go right ahead and just use some rose syrup and create the perfect kunafa as well. With this coming to a roaring boil, all we are going to do is now switch off the flame and allow this to steep beautifully. Having the perfect, perfect crunch on top, this kunafa has got the beautiful golden brown color on top and the cheese has just allowed that extra gooeyness to engulf beautifully within both the crunch up and down. This is ready. All we are going to do now is remove this out and sprinkle that gorgeous sugar syrup that we created right on top. Oh my god, this is actually sheer magic. With the kunafa being so hot and bubbling, it's now time to take this gorgeous sugar syrup that we created and pour it over the top. And I like to let all these orange blossom, rose petals and berries just scent the entire mix further. Just sprinkle this on top. All this now requires is a generous sprinkling of these toasted Turkish pistachios. Beautiful slivers giving you that additional crunch that is so required right on this dessert. The scents of the orange blossom, the rose petals and the berries that are in it is perfect and ready to be savoured. The crunch that you get when cutting into this is by far something that's so required and enjoyed by everybody. Just going to lift this up and see the gooey interior. Perfect. I hope you enjoy creating my version of a kunafa, crunchy, cheesy, and the perfect tea time snack to enjoy, or enjoy it at any time of the day or night. Don't forget to share loads of love by hitting on the like button. And as I always say, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.